We are super excited to be here and super excited to see you. Uh, we have Aaron Ehas and Justin Richmond, co-creators of The Dragon Prince. online and it's even more exciting to see you guys here today. So uh, we have some cool stuff. We have some some special numbers that we can tell you about and um, if the number stuff goes well maybe some other announcements and maybe maybe a, a clip for sure. Explicit permission to show an episode, but we also don't have explicit uh, blocking. Yeah. yeah. First of all, we get to the release date. Yeah. First, no. first, oh, first There's an epic poster. Oh. That's oh. nice. Do you have anything to say about it? It's freaking awesome, right? <laughs> uh, so you guys recognize on that. Who's that dragon? Thunder! That's right. Who is down below? Who uses a dragon? Who uses a dragon? Yes, it is here. And he's carrying something very special. Yeah, who recognizes the weapon he's carrying? It looks yes. like a glaive. It's a rise spear. It's a rise spear. Right. But it's been modified. Yes. So you look, yes, you will see in this season what is happening. It's a rise spear. But, okay. All right, what's next? Uh, so next, you guys want to know the release date? Yes! Hello. Yes. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Dragon 
Kid has a good question. <laughs> so, as we're building this saga, our intention is to do seven seasons. <laughs> segue into the amazing energy of this community. Um, I, I know a lot of you have used hashtag give us the saga um, <laughs> to, to kind of bring that energy and to, to Netflix and, and uh, I guess remind them that we, we want to build this whole thing. So that's the plan. It's good for you. <laughs> Alright, next question. I absolutely love this series and the fantasy world. One of the things I also really love is the art style. It's something that I've never really seen before. It kind of reminds me of the cell shaded graphics from Zelda Wind Waker. Um, uh, I, I, I'm really impressed with it, and I'm just curious why you decided to come with this art style instead of a more traditional looking show. It makes it stand out, I guess that's one reason, but I want to hear from you guys. Um, so, yeah, we, we love anime, we love manga, we love Western cartoons, we love all that stuff. And so we, we were looking for a partner. Um, Bardell Entertainment in Vancouver um, had a, they made a movie called Profit, which is excellent, you should go watch it. Um, and they had used a similar pipeline, they thought it was really gorgeous. And they had this hand painted background look with like a beautiful, almost, almost 2D look to the characters with their 3D. And so when we approached them, they were like, hell yeah, we want to make this show. And, um, and so we used that similar pipeline, and then they took what they had done in that movie and they pushed it a million times further. And I think season three, you guys have to agree, looks incredible, and it just gets crazier as it goes. So that's what I thought. Thank you for welcoming us to the episode. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, my question's about the way magic is portrayed in the universe, and I Living things or dead things, dead animals. Yeah, not not yeah, like dead animals, not dead plants. Um, I'm a voice actor, and one of the things I noticed about the show is the voice acting is on point. Every character feels genuine. I've never for a second thought about delay or dubbing or anything. It just uh, everything is perfect. How hard was it to get that cast together? Because it feels like you got the perfect cast. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, I, I think we we put a lot of care into into the, making the choice, uh, it, and, and in addition to you know the, the voice qualities of, of the voice actors, we just you know we were really lucky to find people who were really passionate and active and were like willing to interact with each other. The, the cast is friends with each other, and they like talk and hang out. And, and when we we go up to Vancouver, where they are based, you know, like, it's just really fun to hang out with them. So I think. Partially, it was it was care taken to make a decision, but we lucked out and got super engaged and excited. Did you ever sit in the studio with them and like change the writing and improv with them to adapt it? Or yeah, we traveled up for all the voice sessions. Um, you know, I was going to add you know, one thing we did is we found people who were really talented and, and passionate as artists, and then we do our best to empower them to bring performance to life. And, that they're capable of, whatever that is, instead of dictating whatever we heard in our head when we wrote the script, we kind of recognize the script as an opportunity for them through the character to, to kind of bring it to life. So it's, it's a little philosophical, but it's a little bit about you know trusting amazing people to uh, 
um, to bring a stronger performance than you could have imagined to it, and we, we try to do that. We've gotten lucky with the amazing people we're working with. Yeah, the performances have been fantastic. The writing's great. So yeah, thank you a lot, guys. Thank you.
So I think that, well, I'm going to reiterate this. When the magnetite, when they, when they took the heart of the magnetite, when they bring it back, right, what happens? Is that what you're asking? Like, what's the result? After they change the season. What are the I don't, I don't know that it did change the season so right. much as that was a, an artistic shot of seasons changing and things growing back. I don't know. Uh, the idea, that, yeah, the idea we had was that, that it enables them to grow fruit during the winter, specifically for that winter, so they're able to grow, they're able to grow enough bounty to actually feed their entire peoples because they can grow in off season. And so the idea was they've been in this huge famine, and it was cold, it was freezing, they couldn't grow anything, they bury that hard, and then it actually enabled them the, the magic of the to actually grow during. So that, that was the effect of it. Right. I think that there's there's cost benefit with that, and you'll see more of it, but it's like it was kind of like local global warming that spell. <laughs> but it went away, but there's definitely, you know, stuff's warmer, so maybe some plants can grow, but maybe some bird can fly as well. <laughs> but there there were repercussions, but we, we might not see them. But it's a good observation in general, which is I think a lot of dark magic is kind of taking advantage of resources in a way that isn't necessarily sustainable or balanced or mindful of the effects that it's going to have on everything else. It's just extracting something and, and um, getting its benefit uh, from the all the consequences. Thank you. I want to check. How much time do we actually have? 15. 15? 15? Okay. So uh, when Brent was chained to a wall and he had a bathroom breaks, <laughs> Does anyone know what a Texas catheter is? <laughs> oh! Can I see that?
Claudia. Um, I know the last season Claudia cast pretty intense spells to heal Soren. Um, since that was such a complicated, involved process and a complicated injury, is that healing permanent, or is that something that she's going to have to keep redoing or rehealing this season? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a vote. Who thinks it's permanent? Raise your hand. <laughs> Who thinks there's gonna, it's going to wear off and there's going to be sad consequences? <laughs> Strange 
have a connection to Anne and we have to see how his father, or had any ancestry who the Indra was, so are we going to see that? Oh, spoiler! <laughs> <laughs> All questions are good questions. So, wait, what was the question? The question was, are we going to see how his father? Oh, we're going to see how his father. We, we have a very, we do have a story of who Calvin's father is and um, what happened um, that we will share sometime. <laughs> it's not, it's not yet. Thank you. Thank you. Are we going to find those guys? So, uh, hopefully, these are short guys. Um, this is pro probably um, um, a really uh, um, obvious, this is probably going to have a really obvious answer. Like, will well, Ezra ever try to use magic or make I mean, more magic or magic? Neil? <laughs> I think he's thought about it. Like conjuring I don't know if I'm going to use it. You have the project that you could use it just to deliver? Or do you think of it? I guess you could see it. Well, there have been a lot of people in Ezrin's life whose magic has affected it in really bad and really good ways. So I think uh, as uh, with his new responsibilities, he's really he's going to have to make a, a tough decision at some point. But it's on his mind. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Hi. Hello. Terrifying. Um, the episode makes Scorpion's out. <laughs> but um, my question is this: really. I find him always on the side of the elves. I'm like humans, no. So I just wanted to know for all of you, like in the beginning, you know, who is that?
And I love how you balance that. So how do you work on balancing that both sides have done great evil to the other side? I mean, it's like... <laughs> we try to be honest and fair to the characters and the aesthetic. Um, even like you use the term original sin, and that refers to right like taking a bite of the apple is not the original sin, and there's like knowledge of good and evil and like. I mean, I, I think we we discuss every story decision a lot and, and make sure try to think about all the characters, think through their characters' eyes, um, and it just it just takes a lot of time and thought. Um, also, maybe. Maybe there are some evil writers and some good writers. <laughs> 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 some writers of a chromist. I love how you guys are talking, and I just wanted to know, what is it to animate all of the sign language? It was super, super hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The animators of the Dragon Prince like went above and beyond and worked overtime and, and went crazy to be as authentic as <laughs> There's one more question left, but we've got to wrap it up. So. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead.